Okay. Uh, I'm Dan Levine. I'm sitting here with a want to be commissioner. I'll let you introduce yourself. My name's Adam Sroka. Hi, Adam. So I'm going to ask you a handful of very straightforward questions, um, and we'll just kind of go through there, and we'll jump right in with the first one. Tell me briefly about your connection to the town. How long have you been here? Do you have any kids that go to the schools here? So my connection to the town is my wife was born and raised here. Uh, they moved here when she was one, so she's been here 30-some years plus. Of course, naturally, I moved out here. I'm from Michigan, so I moved here and I met her. So as natural, we're going to live in her hometown. Um, I do have two kids. Uh, one's a son that's three and a half and a daughter that's one and a half. So they're not in school yet. Part of us okay. living here is because of the great schools of Poolsville. Okay. Um, tell me, are you involved in any current groups within the town, such as business organizations or PTAs or any work that you're doing on behalf of the town? So I've been here, part of the first question was how long I've been here. I've been here a little bit over four years, and I'm already a sitting member on the Fair Access Committee. Okay. So I got in there right away, you know, I got involved in that because it's an important aspect to be a part of. Okay, great. Um, of the current crop of sitting commissioners, who do you feel you personally best align with? There's two probably because I work with them on a almost, you know, monthly, weekly, daily basis would be Ed Reed and Jim Brown okay. because we work hand in hand so much with the Fair Access Committee. Great. Um, what are your opinions on some of the proposed changes to the streetscape and the skate park, if you have any? So the streetscape is needed. We need to um, enhance our streetscape for sure. We need to, you know, freshen it up for people that are coming in and out of the city for sure. I, I'm 100% aboard with it. Okay. Any thoughts on the skate park? No, I, I don't... My kids aren't there, you know, so it's, uh, I, you know, we walk over there. I'm sure if my kids were older using it, I'd have more of an opinion on it, but, you know, we go over there and we see the kids, you know, over there, but my, it's not a place that we visit, okay. is to say. Fair enough. Uh, moving on to a few years ago, there was talk of Chevy Chase Market coming to the town. What will you do to help get either a small mom and pop market that is not already being done or to get a regular grocery chain like an Aldi to open something or some version of itself in town? I think you need a mom and pop here more than a commercial, a Aldi or a Harris Teeter here. Mom and pop would fit in better because just down the road, you know, we do have Harris Teeter, but I think if you stock a mom and pop and it it does local, you can get a local person to run that store, which would keep it local for us in Poolsville, rather than bringing in an Aldi or something like that, where it's going to be a big chain where they're going to have general managers from outside coming in and run that. So I think a mom and pop would be a better place for us where the, you know, you've got your farmers, local farmers that could supply their, their goods to that. Okay, for sure. Thank you. Um, considering currently we have no real food options when it comes to fresh groceries that are not little farmers markets what would you do to help get buses from down county running on the weekends so we've talked about that with fair access quite a bit you know and how we can get more buses out here and i've talked to people about that we need to show the the interest, you need to talk to Montgomery County executives, you need to talk to the the people in charge of the buses to show the real interest of us getting out here. You know, they've done polls in the past that show that there's not a lot of people out here using the buses. I think we need to really set a point of why we need the buses rather than just numbers, um, which is very important in how we can perceive that to other people you know because there might be five six people on the bus and they've got to make a long trip out here but why do we need that bus so that the people can go to the store that the people can you know go get their groceries go to the deck doctors of sudden so it's not the numbers it's we need to show the people in which we would do is have to you know what i would be doing is getting with the executives getting with um 
transportation people to show them why we need the bus out here. Okay. That. Great. Continuing down the food path, how do you help families that are in this town that are not household incomes 100000 or above be able to get affordable food that is something better than fast food and not as expensive as restaurants that we currently have that are slightly pricey? Not every family of four or five in this town can afford a restaurant in this town at 50 or $60 a clip. My wife and I both, we donate a lot to Womco. I mean, she's ahead of it, but yeah, we do a lot of donations to Womco for sure. Okay. Um, do you think Womco is the, the main answer for that then? I, that's our main donation point is through Womco. I mean, we donate a lot of our food through Womco. Okay. I mean, my wife probably donates elsewhere as well that you know i don't know about my wife my wife does a lot of that stuff for me so uh to answer that i know we do like i said the mom goes for sure but i'm sure she does other donations as well on behalf of our family okay how would you help market the town better to either get people to move here or people that go to muldoon's farm for soccer events or other events outside of town such as the polo grounds to get those people to come to town to spend some of their money people know what our town is we just need to talk to the people they need to stop here you know if they just drive through the town and don't talk to anybody that's a problem we need to show them a place to stop and you know now that the locals is here we need to that's selling really good you know people know about it and it's getting out there um, I think like you and I were just talking a little bit ago I'm not a big social media guy but through social media is a big thing nowadays and I think um, through the technology we need to push that through people as well because we do have the Poolsville page we have your page that people use a lot of and we need to broaden it as well to um, maybe some ads of some sort in different magazines different uh, newspapers saying to come to Poolsville type thing of what we have rather than just our you know our small town stuff we need to maybe reach out a little bit farther okay great um, if we kind of moving away from Poolsville stuff for a second if we were to ask a former employer of yours about one area that you have for room for improvement what would they tell us? Wow. That's a funny question because I need to think of that. Room for improvement. I don't really know the answer to that. You know, I feel like I'm well-rounded in a lot of things that I do for my former employers. Um, when I first started my career, was pay attention to the details. You know, it was the the small, minute things of what the industry that I'm in. So, but through time of being in the career I am, you know, you pick up on that. So, I think one thing, I guess, one thing a lot of my employers tell me is I talk a lot of really fast. So, the main thing is slow down um, when you're talking. Would be like the thing I really get. Okay. Um, kind of going down similar line of that last question. If you were talking to yourself in the mirror, what would you tell yourself that you personally want to improve on over the next two to three years? It's funny. Improving family work-life balance is always a thing that I always try to improve on. Sometimes I take my work too serious my other commitments at times you know I, I need to to get the balance so one thing is always working on my work life balance is one thing that I, you know i always say i try to prove on okay um back to the town of poolsville um beyond current issues such as water sewage trash what do you feel are a couple of the biggest issues that may not be currently being talked about that you would like to have worked on or seen improvement in the town that haven't already been discussed today? One thing is we we need to make our county, our town, not our county, sorry, 
our town senior citizen friendly. We need to make it where they can get the doctor, the dentist, you know, if there needs to be a ride, when you maybe need a ride share program for people rather than Uber or stuff like that, you know, we need to make our, our town of Poolsville senior city friendly for sure. Okay. Um, I, I actually only have one last question for you. Okay. Um, the Fair Access Committee, which obviously you are part of, but the Fair Access Committee has been around a long time. With the pending election, Jim Brown could potentially lose his seat if he is not reelected. What would you do to make sure his efforts, his work, along with the other current members, you being one of them, of Fair Access continue? And would you allow him, if he was still willing to be part of it, to be part of it? Jim Brown is the face of Fair Access. Jim Brown does a lot of work for Fair Access. He would. Eh, he would have to take himself out of Fair Access for me to say he can't be a part of Fair Access. Um, he does a lot for this town, and that's part of why I'm a part of Fair Access, because of what he does for this town. Um, he's pushing for a lot of stuff for the future. So, yeah, Jim Brown will definitely, if he doesn't get reelected with open arms, I'd allow him on Fair Access. Okay. Well, I... Honestly, those are all the questions. I appreciate you taking the time to sit down and chat about yep. them. Um, give me a second, and I will turn this off.